Greetings, members and friends, and welcome to the Magnolia United Methodist Church on this glorious day, that of Pentecost, the day that the church was born. I know God's spirit continues to move in new and exciting ways, even today, because his spirit is alive in you and in me. Let's prepare our hearts as we begin our time of worship. Let us prepare for worship. The church has been born on this day of Pentecost. As we come together, we are transformed into the people of God. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us. Guide us and use us. Come, Holy Spirit, and open our hearts to all people. Come, Spirit of peace, calm our hearts in these days that we are living in. Come, Holy Spirit, breath of God, and empower us to service to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, heaven and earth rejoice today. It's a time for celebration of the church, and so we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we will celebrate today. Welcome, Holy Spirit, breathe your breath so we survive. We will let them know that those who call his name will be alive. Fire live inside me. Blessed Jesus, hear my call. While clouds appear to raise our Lord, the angels sing in one accord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, heaven and earth rejoice today. It's a time for celebration of the church, and so we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we will celebrate today. So guide us, Holy Spirit, as you fill us with your love. For Jesus has ascended to his Father up above. He trusted you to live inside our hearts and guide us on our way. So we could go and teach the world to serve him every day. Hallelujah, hallelujah, heaven and earth rejoice today. It's a time for celebration of the church, and so we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we will celebrate today. Well, good morning, boys and girls, and family members, too. Today, as Pastor Carl said, is Pentecost, and on our church calendar, that's a special day, so I tried to dress up a little bit. And what is it special? Well, here's some hints. I got a gift bag in the basket, I got a cake mix, and candles. You're right. We're getting ready to celebrate a party, a birthday party birthday of their church. How did that happen? Well, everything has a beginning. Like when you're born, that's the day you have a birthday. The church, after Jesus ascended, he told him, wait, God's going to give you a gift. Go to a room and wait, and with that gift, you'll be able to spread the word about God and Jesus. And so they waited in this room, and wind came and it was full of spirit, which we call the Holy Ghost. That's how we come up with, when we talk about God and the Trinity, God the Creator, Jesus the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our sustainer, our support, our helper. So it came upon them, as mysterious as God does, it just it's a feeling, you can't touch it, you can't do it, it's in part of your faith and knowing and the, from that moment on, 
they were supposed to go out and tell the world about how Jesus died for our sins, God loves us so much. So that's why we call this day the birth of the church. Now, some people say, well, the church is a building. No. There's a saying, the church is not a building, it's the people. Because the first, uh, when the birth of the church came, there was no church building. People met in homes, and everything met out in a, under a tree. They didn't have buildings like we have. During this pandemic, you haven't come to this building, have you? But we're still the church. And our mission that God gave us, the Pentecost, the birth of the church, is to go out and share the news so people, too, can be saved just like we are. So let us pray. Oh, Father, we are so thankful for what you gave with the birth of the church to those first Christians. They didn't have an easy time of it like we do. Thank you for them spreading the word. And our job is not in this building to worship. Our job is to take your word wherever we live. Amen. Let's go before the Lord in a time of prayer. Oh, powerful God, we come and thank you for this Pentecost day. And we ask that your Holy Spirit continue to empower us to engage the world. Like the mighty wind that filled the house on that first Pentecost day, invade our awareness and fill us with boldness and power. We ask that you would bring a time when we all are willing to listen to and understand one another, and where all communication barriers are overcome. We pray for that time when so many will have a larger vision than just their own selfish dreams. We ask, Lord, that you would bring a time when those with many years are not satisfied just to rest, but to continue to be models of inspiration and to lead others and to continue to bless others by their wisdom and their knowledge. Lord, we ask that you would bring a time when your church is excited and on fire because it knows and serves the God of Pentecost to be that witness of mission and to be reaching out in new and exciting and creative ways. Lord, bring that time when your church engages in alleviating all the sufferings and injustices of our day. That when we work together as Christians and we stop arguing and bickering, that we may truly be one in you. We ask, Lord, that you bless those this day that need your touch in body and spirit, in relationships. We ask, Lord, that you would bring direction for those who feel confused and not know which way to turn. Be with those that are recovering from illness and just continue to strengthen them. For those going through various tests, be with them and bless them. And may they know of our prayers and encouragement for them. Be with those, Lord, that 
are sorrowing. And we ask that you would just be that comfort, that peace, that strength that comes to them and lets them know that they are not alone. We thank you that there will be a time when all of us, all Christians, stand together in unity and in love, being led by your Spirit. We know that you hear us when we pray to you, even now as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever more. Amen. Thank you again for everyone who has participated in these videos. Thank you, Frank, for putting them together and all of those who are responsible for it. We're doing the best that we can to reach out to everyone and fulfill the spiritual needs of the church as we are able to. If you will, please pray with me. Dear Lord, please bless us and keep us. Guide us and protect us during this time. Thank you so much for all that you have given us. Thank you for the spring rains, the sunny days, the good weather, the bad weather. Thank you for all that you have given us, the time that we can spend outside, the time we can spend with our loved ones. Thank you so much for all the gifts that you have given us. Let us use them in the best way that we can. Thank you so much for all that you have given us. In your name, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen.
A Baptist preacher and his wife, Fran, decided to get a dog. Mindful of the congregation, the dog must be Baptist, she said. Well, they finally found one at the kennel, and the manager assured them that they would be very satisfied. They finally arrived at home, and the preacher said, find the Bible. So the dog went over to the bookshelf and was going through all the books, and he found the Bible. Wow, this was amazing. Now find Psalm 23. Well, the dog went and took the Bible and put it on the floor, and then with his paws shuffled through the pages, and lo and behold, found Psalm 23. The Baptist preacher and Fran were very satisfied. Well, that evening, there was a Bible study held at their home. And the preacher began to show off his dog. He had the dog locate all sorts of Bible verses. And all the members were very impressed. One member asked, can he do some regular tricks as well? And the preacher said, well, I haven't tried that yet. Well, he pointed his finger at the dog. Heal, the preacher said. Well, the dog immediately jumped on the preacher's chair, placed his paw on the preacher's forehead, and began to howl. The preacher then looked at his wife, Fran, in shock and said, my word, he's a Pentecostal. Well, the day of Pentecost has come. It's now 50 days since Easter, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Remember on that first Pentecost, some 3,000 people were baptized, creating the first church. This day also celebrates the Jewish festival of weeks, which falls some 50 days after the first Passover. And on that day, God gave Moses the law on Mount Sinai. And God spoke, according to tradition, 70 languages representing the 70 nations of the world. The way Luke, the writer of Acts, reports Pentecost makes it a milestone in the redemptive story that God provides. Remember those transitions that Luke gives us in Luke 2, verse 6. When the time had come for her... Mary to deliver her child. And then in Luke 9, 51, when the day drew near for him to be taken up, the transfiguration of our Lord. These events are very important markers. The coming of the Holy Spirit is also an important marker. It marks a fulfillment, a promise, a transition. And as we know, language can be a measure of fulfillment. Couples in love that want to move forward may say or hear words, will you marry me? Or the graduating student longs to hear, I present the graduating class of 2020. Language marks transitions and makes things happen for all of us. And this includes our faith journey as well. And we know language for some is quite easy and for others very difficult. Nonetheless, one way or another, Speaking faith language is a large piece of our Christian heritage. 
Well, when I was in the first grade, my parents thought it would be a good idea for me to learn Greek. So I went to Greek school. And then in high school, I thought it would be a good idea if I would take Spanish and French. And so I did. When I was in college and in seminary, I took New Testament Greek and some Hebrew. I really enjoyed language. We re need to remember that Thursday's lesson builds on Wednesday's lesson. Wednesday's lesson, in turn, builds on Tuesday's lesson. Language is incrementally learned. And math and language are disciplines that are a steady process of knowledge building. Well, each of us has heard the Acts story of Pentecost so many times. We know that a major influence of Acts chapter 2 is a Pentecost faith language highlighted by these words. As they were all together in one place, divided by nationality and race, and suddenly they were all able to understand numerous other languages. God's Spirit made Pentecost happen. And the Holy Spirit not only appeared to the eyes as tongues, as flames of fire, but the Spirit also sounded like the rush of a mighty wind to the ears. The many known languages undid Babel's tower story in Genesis chapter 11. The day of Pentecost reminds us how we were before God brought us together. And certainly the disciples were all together in one place, but they were like sheep which have no shepherd. And beyond this, the 12 and the other followers were mostly afraid, confused, and paralyzed by not knowing what was going to happen next. Suddenly, this group of Jewish believers, wavering on the edge of unbelief, or at least having little confidence in what God's future held for them, experienced something extraordinary. They understood one another. No other force could unite a group like this diverse as the Holy Spirit did that day of Pentecost. And as the people gather together, we are living in an unprecedented time, as we all know, with a horrible virus. And even though we are not physically gathered together in one place, we are gathered together in a spiritual way as one body, being connected with each other in our joys and praises, in our problems and in our sorrows, families, Singles, young and not so, all following Jesus and being empowered by this gift given on this very special day to go forth and to proclaim good news with the language of love. Only God's Spirit can unite people like us like a mom who seems to be the only one in the house who can get all the children pulling in the same direction. So does the Spirit do that for us as well. Even the Apostle Paul valued the mother-son relationship when he writes, Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and greet his mother, 
a mother to me also. In Romans 6, 13. St. Cyprian said as well as any when he stated, he can no longer have God for his father who is not the church for his mother. Thank God for the Holy Spirit that takes a group of imperfect individuals and crafts and shapes and forms us into the body of Christ, the household of faith. The task of learning the whole language of faith, both its joys and in its sorrow, is difficult. But this day reminds us that it's God who sends the Holy Spirit upon them and upon us. You see, speaking faith language is not dependent on our own strength or wisdom. For the heavens on that day roared and fire burned and the Spirit filled. A disciple preached and the crowd wondered. This gift from the sky is from God. And these signs testify to God's presence and his power. Remember that Jesus began his ministry spirit-filled, and so do the church. Some believe certain things need to happen. But look, there's no mention here of repentance or baptism or laying on of hands before those gathered received the Holy Spirit. This precious gift is used by us in so many wonderful and creative and empowering ways to bring healing and comfort, to witness and to be bold, and to do new things. Well, Jesus tried to show the disciples that they needed the Holy Spirit to guide them in their daily activities rather than trying to do it alone by themselves. There's a story that's told about some surveyors. They were sent to a remote mountain to design a map of the rugged terrain. Every day they would go up and over the rugged mountain and every night come back to camp. And usually every night they were joined by the local shepherd. And they sat around the camp and shared stories. They told of their daily adventures up the mountain. But the shepherd insisted that he would accompany them that very next day so they would not get lost. The shepherd kept insisting I must go with you. Well, the surveyors felt so sure of themselves. After all, they had many successful trips. They became aggravated by the insistence of the shepherd. We have a map, they said, of the area. We don't need you to go. We can do it ourselves. The shepherd said, but there is no fog on your map. Well, the surveyors, experts, went up the mountain early the next day, and soon a thick fog encircled them, and suddenly they were lost. And there, out of nowhere, the shepherd appeared beside them and led them home through the fog. Friends, we may feel so sure of ourselves that we're strong enough to go up and over all the rugged hills of daily living. 
But the Holy Spirit gently calls us. I must go with you to lead the way for you. Remember, on that first Pentecost, the Holy Spirit gave them power of language to be witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and everywhere else. So where is your Samaria today? Are you relying on the Holy Spirit to share good news? The Spirit, you see, helps us live more consistent and overcoming lives. As Ephesians 5, 18 says, be continually filled with the Spirit. So how would your life change if you asked for more of God's Spirit? Well, you can receive more of the Holy Spirit by recognizing your need, confessing your sins, and asking for forgiveness, and ask to be filled with the Spirit for service and outreach, and share those wonderful things what the Spirit has done, and act in faith, Believe you are filled and step out and speak the powerful language of hope and compassion, love, new life of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. God bless you this day, and may you continually be filled with God's Spirit. Amen. Our church sings, so all will hear it, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In your house of love and prayer, spread your gospel everywhere. Even though we're not together, this storm you will help us weather. Anywhere our friends may be, we will pray in unity. Amen. Go forth now, Jesus followers, and continue to be filled with the language of love as God's Spirit leads you and empowers you and is with you each and every day. Go in his name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.